Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cover the main difference between measures and calculated columns inside of Power BI, because that is where you would, that is where you can you can write DAX formula in both those locations. But there is a a big difference in writing them in either location, okay, as a calculated column or a measure. Okay, and I'm going to show you where it's optimal to do to do either of these. Okay. I'm going to very I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to do is going to start off with creating a calculated column because this is probably what you're most familiar with if you've come from an Excel background. You know, you're used to getting a, a data set or a, a table of data and then just coming on to the end and putting in some Excel formula and then doing it again and again and again. So you can actually do that inside of Power BI 2, okay? So let's do it. And what, um, what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to write, you see here that in, in my sales table, there isn't actually that much information. A lot of the information actually sits within the products table, like in terms of, you know, what's the current price of the product? Um, what's the cost of the product, etc. Okay. And so what I need to do is I need to find a formula or a function to place inside that calculated column, which enables me to bring this information down to my sales table. Now the model is a big part of this because of the model that we've built we can actually achieve this okay even though i'm going to tell you after we do it that it's not the most optimal way to do it i'm, I'm going to show you anyway how you can actually get these calculations in here okay so i'm going to go new column and this is just how you create a calculator column and i'm going to go and call this one revenue okay and then i'm going to use a function called oh no actually i'm going to go price sorry i'm going to go price um, prices Okay, and then I'm going to go and use a function called related. And what it does, what related does, it returns a related value from another table. So it makes sense, right? And then I'm going to go and find the current price column here. Okay, and then I'm going to um, just close off the brackets and push enter. Okay, and so now you'll see that the price is feeding through here based on the product that we that has been bought in this particular transaction so every row here is a transaction and it's bringing me my my prices into um into this table now and then what i could ultimately do is i could come here and i could go to new column and then i could then find my revenue right i could go revenue equals prices so you see here i can actually reference a column by itself prices times quantity okay now I have no doubt because even I did this when I started uh, first started using Power BI that you think <clears throat> that you would think that you need to create lots and lots of um, calculated columns like this to get all of this additional information into your um, into your tables. Now the great thing is in, within Power BI is that you do not need to do this if you set up your model correctly. Okay, you can actually use measures where and write and write um, use DAX functions uh, within measures instead instead of calculated columns okay there is <clears throat> calculated and I'll come back to it in a second like calculated columns do have their purpose but bringing data into what we deem as a fact table is not one of them that is not an optimized way to use calculated columns inside of Power BI you never really want to be using calculated columns down here in your fact table up here in your lookup table, it makes sense, and I'll show you that in a second, but I first want to show you measures, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab, um, let's let's just grab all our customers, right? I'm going to grab my customers, and I'll turn this into a table so we can actually see the customers, see the customer names, right? Okay, so I'm going to write a formula here as a measure to show you that I can go and calculate up those that, that revenue number just within a measure, not having to reference um, like a, a particular column. So you see here, I've got a column here that is now revenue. I can drag that in here and I'm going to calculate some revenue. Okay. I never really, I never want you to do this. I never want you to just grab a column and drag it into a visual or a table to get results. That's, that's just not what you want to do in Power BI. Every time you bring some calculation into a visual, you want to be you want to have it as a measure okay so check this out i'm going to create a measure here so we can create a measure a few ways but you can go to home and you can click on new measure here okay 
the way to think about measure which is very different to calculated columns is that they are like a virtual calculations while a calculated column um, runs a calculation and basically embeds um, data into a table a measure only runs a calculation when you actually bring it into a visual or bring it into your report page so it only does a calculation then so it's an amazing way to uh, get lots of calculations in your model but they don't actually take up much room and then you can just bring them into a report page and they'll calculate only that one time or when they're filtered or sliced or whatever okay so I'm gonna call this one total sales okay and I'm gonna utilize a, um, a function called an iterating function now I'm gonna go into these a little bit more um, shortly but this is just to, to highlight you know what a measure can do and how it can um, enable you to calculate very similar things to calculated columns. Okay, so I'm gonna go down to a new line and I'm gonna do that by going shift enter. Okay, and I'm going to call a function called sum x. Okay, so these are, these are, these are sort of called iter iterating functions rather than just a aggregating function, which is like a sum and it has an x on the end. And then I'm gonna go and basically do what it says here. It, 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 what sum x does is it returns the sum of an expression evaluated at each row in a table okay so it says to enter a table i'm going to enter the sales table and basically what it does is it iterates through every single row in this table and runs some sort of logic some sort of expression okay and so i'm going to um iterate through the sales table and at every single row i'm going to go quantity times the related current price so does this look familiar right does this look familiar so basically i didn't i'm going to go and do exactly what we did with those calculated columns to achieve this i'm going to do it all virtually within a measure here it's going to go and run exactly the same logic but it doesn't require me to have any data points inside of the table or or just physical data in the table okay and then i'm going to push enter and you'll see down here measures appear in the front end um, as uh, a calculator as a calculator next to it and then I'm going to drag this into my table here and you'll see that I'm getting exactly the same results right exactly the same results and it's all been done virtually in a much more optimized way it's so much more efficient for your model to be doing things with DAX okay and so then I would just you just don't want to be using these sort of columns and what I would do is I would come through here and delete these you don't need you just do not want these columns at all because you just don't need them okay they're just they're just taking up because every sort of data point in a big table or any data point at all is taking up memory in your model right and um, even though you know for smaller models it's not a big deal but you know very quickly you can get to models with millions of rows and you want to be as optimized as possible and so this particular table has 15,000 rows and all of a sudden I'm just getting rid of 15,000 um, you know data points that just are unrequired so you know I'm optimizing my model here okay and so now I have this total sales and this total sales is also totally dynamic so you know if say I want to see okay well which salespeople so I'm, I can just quick, create a quick filter here which salespeople sold um, to which customers I can click that and I get my total sales a, ch a number changes based on that it's totally dynamic right all of those calculations are being done in behind the scenes virtually every time we go and change what's called the context which we will certainly be diving into in a lot more detail shortly okay and this is just the start this is just one formula you know you, you have to there, there's a whole range of different DAX formula that you can use that have multiple many different purposes but you know I, I can give you some reassurance that you, know, you can virtually calculate anything you could dream up if you utilize DAX measures well right and and in combination with the right data model what you will find is that um, if you don't set up your base well here in the model so if your model is confusing and you don't f truly understand what's going on here and you and you can't sort of like visualize what's going on with all your filters and etc then you'll start thinking that you have to write really super complex DAX formula but I'm telling you you do not if you set up your model well DAX can be very um, easy to implement I would say you know it's 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 not a huge huge learning curve that some of you may think you, you it might be ahead of you there you know I'm not gonna sugarcoat it and say it's simple uh, DAX is simple it's, it's not 
um, but certainly you can help yourself immensely if you um, set up your model well and have that, that 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 good base build, and then DAX should work more seamlessly on top of that. You know, and you and you don't have to overly complicate things. They can um, work a lot more intuitively in your mind in terms of like, okay, what logic do I need to write? Here it is. I can, um, you know, it, it makes total sense in that particular context. Okay, now um, that's just the start, right? You can do uh, many different many different things um, with DAX. You can and you can create measures quite quickly, right? So you can come over here, create a measure um, that might be, say, total quantity, okay? And we'll go over a few more of these in, in the next section as well, but total quantity, you know, I could just go counts, um, counts up the quantity column. So I could use a sum, right? I don't need to do anything fancy with just one column here because I'm just literally counting up that particular column. And I'm counting up here the quantity that we are, um, selling to those particular customers for that for those amount of sales right it doesn't break down which products etc but it breaks down you know the, the the total sales and total quantity if we did want to break it down by product this is where the data model comes in we could then go and grab our product name column and drag it into there and now we're getting a breakdown of the if we just um, sort it getting a breakdown of the total sales by customer and by product and that's all been made possible by what we have inside of our data model. Now, the last thing I want to show you is where you should where you where you should use a calculated column. Okay, the way to think about calculated columns is they they can build out your slicing and filtering possibilities. Okay, so if you think about the model, all of the calculations are generally going to be done in your fact table because that's where your transactions are, um, and all of these up here are sort of like filtering tables. They're going to filter those calculations and the logic that you put down inside of here. So as an example, let's go to our date table. And so we've got we've got a range of different ways that we can filter our um, tables by, right? Well, what if we don't in this table have a particular column that we want to slice by? And one like really simple example here we could use is, well, I want a short month. Like I have the full month here, but from a visualization perspective, if I, if I wanted to show things by month, well, I want a short month. I just want the first three letters of, of this particular month. So what I could do here is I could go new column and I could go short month like so. And then I could just use a simple function like left and then find the month name column, right? And then go three and push enter okay and this is what i mean by building out your filtering tables or your lookup tables okay and this is where you know you can't do measures you can't create measures for that like for this sort of filtering you know inside of power bi the dax measures are more sort of like the calculations and so this is uh, a way to um, somehow create a column or a dimension is another name for it that you can then use in the front end here, you know, say for instance, you wanna now bring that short month into your table, you could click and drag it in, and then all of a sudden you have the ability to filter. You'll see that this isn't, um, this isn't actually sorted correctly, that can be quite easily fixed, but basically this is now a filter in my model. To actually fix the uh, filtering, um, uh, the sorting, sorry, the sorting of this, this is, a, this is a good sort of segue into that before we round off this this video um, is that within this date table you have the columns which enable you to do that sort so we've got this column called month of year right and so what I can do is I can highlight this short month column and I can come into here and find the sort by column right sort by column and then I can find the column which says month of year Okay, so now this column is sorted by that one, and you'll find that this is now in the right order. Okay, so this video has gone on a little while. Um, I want to round round it off here, but I want to give you a really good, you know, some really good fundamental understanding of the difference there, because that can lead to a lot of confusion early on when using Power BI. So once you've got this, you know you're you're well prepared to move on. Okay, let's let's jump to the next uh, video and um, jump into some more measures.